Hello and welcome to Sunday School Lesson Number Twelve. Today we'll be, talk we'll be talking about the weapons of our warfare. The weapons of our warfare. May the Lord Himself teach us and help us to deploy these weapons profitably. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to study at your feet. We pray that you'll open our eyes to understand the promises and the tools available for us to fight this spiritual battle that's ahead of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to talk about the weapons of our warfare. Our text is taken from Ephesians 6, 13 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 to 18, and it reads, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having gathered your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication. Our memory verse is taken from 2 Corinthians 10 verse 9. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 9 in King James Version it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. In the New Living Translation it goes thus, it says we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. You can see from the above, both the passage and the memory verse, that the, there are some battles that are not fought with physical weapons. And when we say our weapons are not cut it means they're not physical. We're not looking for guns and bombs and arrows. But all the same, we have some mighty weapons that can help us overcome the enemy, enemies against our spirits. In Ephesians 6, 12, it says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So the battle is not physical, it's spiritual. So the weapons that we use, the tools that we use to fight the battle also has to be spiritual. I pray that as we study, we'll be able to withstand the devil's strategy. The devil has all these cunning ways of coming at us using spiritual means. We also should be able to fight against him, resist him with spiritual weapons, and to stand on the authority that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we have two outlines. The first one talks about the whole armor of God, and we're going to go through the Bible passage and itemize the various armors that are discussed in that passage. And then the second one talks about other weapons of spiritual warfare. So outline one, the whole armor of God. In the first place, no soldier goes to battle with only one weapon. If we've taken a close look at soldiers or even policemen in, in some countries, they have batons, they have guns strapped to their waist, they have tasers, some of them even in their, in their socks, in their trousers at the, at the, near their feet, they have additional guns stand, uh, in there. So soldiers don't go with just one weapon. They go with multiple weapons and they deploy depending on the situation. When the battle is long, we should not give up. We need to continue pressing forward, keep on fighting, because we will surely be victorious. So, in today, with the first outline, we're going to talk about the whole armor of God. What does the whole armor of God consist of? Number one, it has the belt of truth. It has the belt of truth. Why do we need truth to fight? It's because the one who is instigating the battle against us the devil is a liar so we have to counter his lies with truth in john 4 john 8 44 john 8 44 it says you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of all lies so the devil peddles in lies he deals in lies we have to counter that when we are fighting against the forces of darkness. We have to counter that with the truth. That's why we need the belt of truth to go into this battle. John 8, 32. John 8, 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth 
shall make you free. The truth in the word of God shall make us free. And that's a potent weapon against the enemy. The second tool, the second weapon we're going to talk about is the breastplate of righteousness. Now, this righteousness we're talking about is not self-righteousness. It's the righteousness that has been imputed to us through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the righteous one. And as soon as we become his children, as soon as we are born again, we take on, we are covered, we are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So we need that breastplate of righteousness. The, the, the breastplate preserves our bodies from harm, from, you know, when you see soldiers, the physical breastplate actually guards the softer part of the body so that arrows of the enemy cannot pierce the heart or the lungs or the kidney. So the breastplate of righteousness is what preserves us, the vital parts of our body. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me. Because we have that breastplate of righteousness, there's no type of weapon, arrow that is thrown at us that will penetrate because our hearts, our souls, our bodies have been guarded and protected by this breath, this, this breastplate. They, you know, that, that breastplate is what represents our, our, our faith. It's a shield. It, it protects us. It represents our faith. It protects us even as we receive the word, the word of God. The next um, weapon that we have is the preparation of the gospel of peace. Preparation of the gospel of peace. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us a directive, clear directive when he was leaving the earth. In Mark 16, 15, he said, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. So preaching is a weapon. When they say go and do evangelism, personal evangelism, mass evangelism, evangelism, you're actually going out to fight. You're using that weapon that you've been given to fight spiritual battles. And, you know, the, the, there's benefit to it. Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. And salvation is good news. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things. Who proclaims salvation? Who says to Zion, your God reigns? You know, when Jesus Christ was born, the angel said, good news. I bring you good tidings of good or great news. Because unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So the good news of salvation is glad tidings. It's good tidings. It's good news. It's salvation. And those who spread this good news, those who proclaim this good news are blessed. Their feet are beautiful. In Daniel 12, verse 3, it says, Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn, in, who turn many to righteousness like stars forever. Do you want to shine? You have a weapon you can use to help you shine. That is the weapon of preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So preparation of the gospel of peace is one of our weapons. Another weapon is the shield of faith. Now, the breastplate is there close to the body. Then you see soldiers holding out something in front of them, you know, shield that they can move around. That is the shield of faith. It's there to stop the arrows from coming in. In Hebrews 12 verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, Jesus Christ is our example. And he's the one who perfects our faith. So we look on to him. In those battles, we don't go in our own strength or in our own might. We go in the name and the strength and the might of Jesus Christ. Because he's the one who perfects our faith. He's the one who orchestrates, who, defined, who defines our faith. faith. So that shield of faith is, is, is important. We hold it out and it's able to withstand every fiery arrow or dart that the enemy is trying to shoot at us. The next weapon is the helmet of salvation you see the, we need the helmet because the head is very important even soldiers policemen and terror policemen you see them they, they cover their, their heads they have a helmet covering their heads so we as children of god in order to fight this spiritual battle we need the helmet and this helmet is salvation the helmet of salvation is the one that protects our minds because the battle is actually in the minds it protects our minds and our thoughts against you know the arrows of doubt and despair that the enemy is trying to, to sow into our hearts. So with salvation, we're able to block out all those 
on, on unwanted suggestions, unwanted thoughts. In 2 Samuel 22, verse 3, 2 Samuel 22, verse 3, the God of my strength in whom I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. So we put on that shield of salvation to make sure that our minds are stayed on Christ, our minds are not wandering around, you know, absorbing all the lies that the enemy is trying to spread. The next weapon is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. It's His Word. It's the, sanctify them by their truth. Their Word is the truth. It's the Word of God that does most of the fighting for us. Besides the word that we hear, we hide in our hearts, that we don't sin against him, that's the word that we proclaim and we use it to, you know, respond and counter the attack of the enemy. When Jesus Christ was tempted in the, in the wilderness, he used the word of God to counter the arguments of the, of the enemy. In Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So the word is a powerful weapon. The word heals, the, Lord, the word delivers. We use the word to fight against the enemy, to, to counter whatever arguments the enemy may have. In Hebrews 4.12, Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow. He's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. We can use the word, which is a sword, both as a defensive weapon and also as an offensive weapon. Remember, it's like a two-edged sword. In whichever direction you swing it, it will work. So the word of God is a powerful weapon for us in spiritual warfare. And the final um, weapon is prayer. Without prayer, we can do nothing. Without prayer, we can do nothing. Our physical armors, our physical bow and arrow, guns, bombs, they can't do anything. It's in the place of prayer that we're able to deploy all these weapons. In Psalm 44, verse 3, Psalm 44, verse 3 says, For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. The children of Israel did not win the land of Canaan because they were superior warriors. You know, it wasn't their sword or whatever. It was the Lord who fought for them. So also we go to the Lord in prayer. That's a final weapon. We go to the Lord in prayer and he fights for us. Proverbs 21 verse 31 says, The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. Another translation says, Victory is of the Lord. So prayer is very, very important. First Thessalonians 5 17 says, Pray without season. Pray without sin. Are you facing a challenge? Are, you, are, are the enemies fighting against you? Go to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. James 5.16 you know, encourages believers. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And as we use all these tools, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and prayer. All the Lord will fight all our battles for us and we shall be victorious in Jesus' mighty name. Now, we've looked at these weapons that can be likened to physical weapons. What are the other weapons that are available to believers? So this is outline two, other weapons for spiritual warfare. There's a powerful weapon in praise. There's the power of praise and worship and thanksgiving. It's a powerful weapon. Some people in those days when we had manual uh, gears, gear system in cars, some cars had five gears. Some, will, a lot of men of God will say, when you've tried gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, those are the normal gear. Go into gear five. Gear five is praise. When everything else has failed, try praise. And we saw that in the, in the life of Jehoshaphat, the story of Jehoshaphat, when Judah was invaded by the armies of three powerful nations, he went to the Lord and the Lord gave him assurances and gave him victory only on praise. Second Chronicles 2015, 2 Chronicles 2015, I said, listen, all of you, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, that was the prophet of God talking to them. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. 
and by verse the same second chronicles 20 22 to 24 it says now when they began to sing and to praise the lord sent ambushes against the people of ammon moab and mount seir who had come against judah and they were defeated for the people of ammon and moab stood up against the inhabitants of mount seir to utterly kill and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of seir they helped to destroy one another so when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude and there were dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. Jehoshaphat and his people did not fire a single shot. Yet the well-armed armies of three nations fought against themselves and fought to the end. They killed themselves. So praise is a very powerful weapon. Another powerful weapon is the name of Jesus. It's the name above all names. Philippians 2 verses 9 to 11. Philippians 2, 9 to 11 says, Therefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the father remember the story of peter and john at the beautiful gate they said to the lame as peter pulled him more by the hand said, in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk so that is a weapon the name of jesus is a weapon proverbs 18 verse 10 says the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and are safe david practiced this when he was facing goliath in 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defended. And the rest of the story, you know, who won? The one who fought in the name of the Lord God of Israel. So our physical weapons are nothing compared to the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is another powerful weapon. The blood sets us free. The blood cleanses us. Revelation 12 verse 11 says, And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. The blood of Jesus is a powerful weapon. That's why we're encouraged from time to time to partake in the Holy Communion, where we partake of his body and also his blood. Personal testimony is another powerful weapon. As we read in that passage, Revelation 12, 11, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies. When we share testimonies, they, it connects us to God's grace. It connects other people who key into those testimony. It connects them to the grace of God and they too are able to receive deliverance. They get hope by listening to our testimonies. People have hope and they're able to key in and get their own victory, their own deliverance. Another powerful tool is fasting, Christian fasting, not fasting for show, but fasting genuinely, seeking the face of the Lord. Isaiah 58 verse 6, Isaiah 58 verse 6 says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke. So we're talking about genuine fasting to seek the face of the Lord and to pray. So fasting is a powerful weapon. Matthew 17, 21. Remember the story of the man who, you know, who had epilepsy and the father brought him to the disciples. They prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. And when Jesus Christ came, he ordered the demons to leave and the boy was healed. And the disciples went to Jesus. Why couldn't we do it? He said, this type does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 21. He says, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Are you praying on a particular issue? Try fasting. Add fasting to it. Praise the Lord. Unity is another spiritual weapon. When brethren dwell together in unity, there is power. When Peter was imprisoned, the other Christians gathered together and prayed for him and he was released. Acts 12 verse 5. Acts 12 verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Jesus even told us that when we come together, when two or three of us agree concerning anything on earth, he will grant it to us. So unity in prayer is very important. Matthew 18 verse 19. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth 
concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So we've seen uh, several weapons, weapons that we brought from the passage that we read, Ephesians 6, 13 to 18, belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, preaching the gospel, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit and prayer. Then we looked at other, other weapons. Praise the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, testimonies, fasting, unity. I pray that as we deploy these weapons genuinely, God will fight all our battles and will come out victorious in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for revealing to us the powers, the very powerful tools, weapons you have provided for us. Help us, O oh Lord, as we deploy these tools and weapons to come out victorious, that your name and your name alone will be glorified. Fight all our battles for us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.